There we go. All right, thank you. Our guest artist this month is Sloan Perutz, a ceramic artist who creates both functional and decorative art. Her demo is entitled Clay, an exciting and versatile medium. And she will show us her process from raw clay to finished pieces. Besides the beautiful bowls, dishes, crocks, vases, wall pieces, jewelry, and buttons that Sloan creates, she does collaborative work with fellow artists by incorporating clay into basket weaving and glass beads into her pottery. As one potter to another, I'm very happy to welcome Sloan Perutz. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I want to say thank you so much to um, you all. Thank you, Lena, for um, those kind words in your article. And um, welcome to my studio. Um, <clears throat> I often get jealous of other people's studios because um, in different mediums, you know, a glass studio is very clean, a painting studio is fun and full of paints, a clay studio tends to be on the um, messy side, but, <laughs> but it's a fun place, and if, if you can't get dirty, you know, don't, don't take up clay. Um, feel free to answer to ask questions along the way i'm happy to answer them anytime i wanted to um introduce myself yes i'm sloan perutz um i am a member of the east valley artists and you can usually find my work um at most of their events i also have my work at the coastal arts gallery in half moon bay on main street there um, it's a fun co-op gallery. Um, please stop by any time. Um, I started clay, you know, dabbled in high school, um, picked it up probably um, 10 years after and really was loving it. I, I took classes at Blossom Hill Crafts in Los Gatos and um, wonderful environment enjoyed clay up until I had two wonderful little girls and life got a little busy. So I took a break and I came back 10 years later now um, and clay had completely changed. <laughs> there used to be the, the China painting, the low fire glaze with very detailed work and kind of gold along the edge. And then the high, high fire stoneware stuff that often was browns and um, more natural colors. Those were your options. Well, in my break, they came up with a mid fire clay. You still get the beautiful um, sturdiness of the stoneware and you still can get movement on your glazes, which is which you want, um, but you have some fun colors which you never used to have. So um, <clears throat> when I started up again, I think it was 10 or 12 years, uh, he said, no, you got to try this way. And I was a stick, you know, but everything, I, it's still roughly the same process and it has been a good move. I've, I've loved it. Um, I need clay. Uh, clay is, like I said, exciting and versatile. I truly believe that you can make anything out of clay. I um, have earrings that I love to make out of clay. I have functional pieces. I have um, uh, vases, um, two piece joined. Um, so you can, you can join and make, you know, it as tall as I am. It just has to fit in your kiln. That's, that's one of the limiting factors. <laughs> and um, you can make wall art. This is one of my new favorite things I'm doing um, is this is a wall hanging and mm -hmm. I don't know if you could see it. It's it's actually unglazed and it's very textural. So um, wow. I'm having a lot of fun. I don't know if you could see this piece of wood right here. I'll give you a tour in a minute. I'm gonna make a four foot one. So I can't wait. That's on the docket this summer is to make a a really big one. Um, let's see. I um, 
there are many, many stages of clay. Um, and the first, I, I like to say there's roughly 10 stages of clay. Uh, the first is the clay itself, which is sold in boxes like this, which contains two 25 pound bags of clay. So you have to carry home your 50 pound uh, box of clay. So that gets you ready for wheel throwing because you need you need those muscles. Um, and uh, oh, wait, before I do that, I want to give you a tour. Sorry. I, uh, a tour of the studio. Okay. So as you can see, I'm going to flip it around. Maybe. Okay, maybe I won't flip it around. Um, okay. So here are some of my pots that I have made and I'll talk about that in a minute. Here are some of the glazes and I want you to see some of the wonderful colors I can get now um, with uh, with this mid-fire clay. And again, you don't, you, I'm not compromising myself on um, the strength or anything. It's, it's a win-win. Here's my beautiful um, four foot piece that I'm gonna do. Uh, my studio is actually a carport, so it's open air and it's freezing. So uh, I share it with the wind and the leaves and raccoons and things. But you know what? One time I had a raccoon make a mark on my pot and I saved it and, and I have that at the house. OK, here's the fun spot. This is where all the all my favorite part. I love wheel throwing. Um, a friend of mine who actually is going to be demoing uh, next month for you. Jennifer will, happy birthday, Jennifer. It's her birthday today. This is her wheel and we've been trying to get together and throw and we haven't yet, but I use this one for the black clay. So I have a separate wheel and tools and everything. And then this is my traditional um, normal clay. I can use different colors on it, but the black clay is is fairly um, invasive. Um, okay, we're going to come around here and we have the kiln um, and my shelf area. So as my work gets done, I put um, work to dry here. Once it's dry, it goes there. And then this beauty does both my firings, the glaze and the bisque. Um, and actually, let's have a look because I fired it up last night. To so I do have these. These are not normally in there. These were drying for our demo today. So we're going to. But here um, are my ramen bowls. These are wonderful, wonderful pieces that um, are very popular. Here's some of my feathers for my feather piece that the big piece so I'm starting to make those and I'll take this other one out I was getting it dry so I could show you the many stages perfect I'll flip that over okay so let's go back and talk a little bit about clay um we uh as you know I do cone five um five six and uh, some of the fun options we have are traditional colors, but there's a, a new black clay that I'm in love with. Um, this actually happens to be one of the collaborations. We sold these at the gallery. Shelly, who was your demo artist last month, is your, the Lampwork bead, uh, glass bead gal. So um, these are wonderful things on naked black clay that I would throw on that other wheel and um, just embellished. Uh, it's fun with white clay, with any clay. She and I have done a number of pieces together and it really is fun and interesting. I have a surprise for you at the end of the demo. I'm going to throw a bowl <clears throat> that, hold on, I'll get the picture for you. Um, that your next month artist, Jennifer Wool, she is going to be um, do, 
uh, doing the the work on too much line. So I'm going to throw in the black clay. This is her drawing in the black clay. And then I'm going to cut out and drill holes for her to do some sort of magic. And I think she'll do that in your demo next month. So that's kind of a fun thing that she and I were doing. Um, clay can be anything you want. Um, there's different types of firing. I tend to do traditional glazed or unglazed firing, but there's Raku too. And this is a fun piece. It's not the black clay, it's white clay, but um, it gets fired at a very low temperature and pulled hot um, with these cool giant tong things. And it's put in a metal garbage can that is prepped with sawdust, combustible materials, interesting things, dried um, banana peels can do it. And then you catch it on fire and you put the lid on and the the smoke is captured and that's what makes this the black. Um, Raku pieces are beautiful. They're, they're not, um, they, they can't hold water and they're not good for eating, but they're fun, interesting decorative pieces if you wanna do something fun. But, um, okay, so clay. So here is a sample of, uh, a 25 pound bag of clay. Um, this is how it comes. You can wedge it. I hate wedging. Um, or I tend to wheel wedge and I'll show you that. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna follow along. So if if we were just here getting ready to pot like I love to do. You have to cut and weigh your pieces. This was a new bag this morning. I threw a couple of pieces to see if they'll be firm enough to do a trimming for you. Um, Tatiana or Mary, have you guys ever had a potting potter demo before? I can't remember, maybe. Okay, okay. Um, we did, but it was a long time ago. Oh, good. Okay. It wasn't Joy Wallingford, was it? No. Okay. Um, she was a wonderful artist, a clay artist. We used to have a, an, another clay artist at our club. Um, so if we're gonna make, say, a mug, you need your pieces to be roughly the same weight and you can wedge, which is um, the process of just getting the clay without air bubbles, because that's what I usually do is put air bubbles in it, but you want to make it more pliable all the way through. Um, I'm lucky this is not, this is brand new clay, fresh out of the bag. So it's already happy. Um, and so we'll use that to throw. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever watched the great pottery throwdown. The first thing that happened when I watch it with my family is they all yes, said, that's great my, fun. everybody, it's a wonderful show. Everybody's, yeah. Do you need your your clay to be in a rough ball before you go and throw it? It's it's going to be much easier to try to throw than something like this. Okay. So now let's go throw something. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to move you over to the wheel. Let's see. Okay. Oh yeah. You need your clay print. I don't know if you could see me. This is a wonderful thing. It helps 
to keep the clay off you. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Oh, wait, here for them. All right. Generally, um, you uh, need to think about your shape and what you're making. Um, I uh, often try to think all the way through the entire process so that I have to think about how I'm glazing things so that you know, okay, is this going to be, you know, half naked, half not? You want your shape to, to, reflect and enhance your glaze. One of the things um, that's very challenging, and I'll get to the glazing stage, um, is glazing. Glazing is, to me, that's like my nemesis. So um, one of the things I'm enjoying doing is seeing how I can make some pieces um, that aren't all glazed because uh, perfectly thrown pot doesn't matter how perfectly thrown it is if the glaze doesn't work out and the glaze can be um to me is the trickiest part so uh i've been playing my new wall pieces are unglazed so um which does two things it simplifies the process for me but they're also I add texture to them. And so with it being unglazed, the texture really comes through and um, really makes it shine. If it were in a glaze, if it if they were glazed, I would have to do something else because texturally it wouldn't be as striking. So, um, you know, different things. Okay, this is one of my favorite tools. I don't know if Mary has one of these. Um, it, allows me to not have to have so many of the large bats. I can just pot, change this bat system, and um, it has less stuff that you're keeping around in the studio. Let me flip this over so it can start drying. So I want to trim that so that I could show you trimming. We'll see. It could be too wet. Um, play with its many stages uh, adds to the challenge of the medium. Um, so we 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 have our first stage, which is the clay. Then. Um, and and wedging so we've gotten that already now the fun part of the clay okay you want it to be as close to center as you can because it's just going to be another um it, make it more challenging for you if you don't have it close if you throw the ball way over here you know, the, the force, um, it won't work. I've been having rascally things that fall off. Okay. This is centering. You, I lock my elbow into my hip bone and you push with your left hand and push down with your right at the same time, compressing it and, um, trying to get it on center. Um, I do like to wheel wedge. It, instead of wedging it on the board over there where I usually end up getting air bubbles in it, you can wedge on the wheel, which is just getting, just moving the clay up and down together to get it ready to be thrown. Okay, so now let's give it a good, Okay, I forgot to look how much clay this was. I'm thinking it's about three pounds. So I'm gonna make a large ramen bowl. There's some of my favorite things and I can't keep them in stock. Um, 
uh, and the large ones, this is my new speckled clay. It's beautiful. It's lovely with a white or a light glaze because these lovely brown spots come out and um, it's just beautiful. So what I usually do glaze wise with those is something simple. Um, my white, my standard white with a swoosh of black is fun um, because it it ties in with the black speckles. I've done black and brown. I do blue. You could do any color. So, okay, stop talking and let's. That feels pretty good. I'm wondering if this is more clay. Okay, full speed while centering. Um, full speed while opening, and then you slow it down. Um, so we're centered. Now we're going to open. And the important thing is, is to control the outside and the rim. That is, um, is vital in keeping your piece centered. And clay has a memory. Um, if, if I am making a big bowl and I do a big pull all the way out, if I don't gently coax the bottom just back in, just to smooth it, and you run the risk of as it's drying, it keeps wanting to pull out. So um, clay has a memory. In some ways, it's a very good thing. If you're throwing and it gets, you have this beautiful piece, and as you're transferring it, it gets bumped. Hopefully, with a tap and some love, it'll remember the shape that it was. Um, but there's some tricks for doing that. Okay, now let's see. I should have done this sooner, but let's see how. Oops. It's a little too thick. Okay, let's keep keep going. Little bit more. Now you need to leave some for trimming uh, when I flip it over and trim it, and we'll do that phase in a minute. Okay. Now I've gotten it the thickness I want. I'm going back inside. I'll I'll push it back just to remind it that it wasn't only going out. And now I'm going to pull it up. And when you're pulling it up, no matter whether you're making a bowl or a vase, it's best to start coming straight up because if I start having it go out, it's harder to corral it back in. It's much easier to come straight up and then take it where I want it um, as opposed to it already being out and now there's nothing else I can do because it's it's gone out. Um, so let's pull it up. Okay, slowed the wheel down. And you want to pull up as slowly as your wheel's going. So, you want to do a full rotation at least before you continue pulling up. Um, and co consistent pressure. Now, um, 
when I made my centered my ball of clay, I forgot to explain that right here is roughly going to be the base size of your piece. Um, I may go in a little bit with my fingers as I'm shaping it, but if you want it to be a small, skinny little thing, this can't do that. It, then you need to be thinking about the size of your base before you throw it. If I'm throwing a plate, of course, we'd go all the way, and I wouldn't use this removable bat because it needs the support. But for this, it's perfect. Okay. A little bit of water, not too much. Okay, dig in. At, can you see that I've made a little finger niche, niche there? I'm gonna, when I throw the black piece, I'll be on that side. So you'll be able to see what my hand's doing on the other side. But for now I'm using this throwing sponge, which helps because if you hit a dry spot um, and your fingers might be dry, it will pull and it can pull your pot off. So I do this, I use the sponge for the first few times. And then as it gets closer to the finishing edge, I use my fingers because I need to feel exactly how thick um, and see how much I need to move. I um I truly believe that with clay you're only limited by your imagination. Um you could make anything. Like I said, you know, it's that and the size of your firing of the kiln. Um I can't make a, you know, 4 foot piece cuz I can't fire it in there. But I push the boundaries on about 3. Three feet, so you know why not? Let's let's try it. It's clay, and if and if it doesn't work, it's just clay. I can reclaim it. I can wedge it up, and I can start again. I have to remember that. Um, that's like with everything, like paintings. We, um, you know, you can cut up pieces of a watercolor and use them in other watercolors, assemblage. Uh, um, you can paint over an, uh, an oil or an acrylic, I think. I don't know. I don't. Um, the, the possibilities are endless. So I, um, I love studio time that's not necessarily productive. It's kind of dreamy so that you can think of all these things that you want to make. Then you just need to find time. And uh, it's fun when you have friends who you can collaborate, art clubs. Yeah, we uh, love art, art club. Um, your your guys' club seems to be pretty fantastic. Okay. Rambling. I'm making a bowl. I'm not making a, a large thing. So I think it's time to start shaping it. Um, let's look. Clay shrinks a lot. That black clay shrinks almost 15%. It's huge. It's amazing. This stuff is about 10 to 12. So right now, this is four feet, four feet, four inches tall and four and a half inches wide. I like my large ramen bowls to be three and a half inches tall and seven or eight. Um, production potting can be challenging. Um, throwing the exact same thing over and over and over. And that's um, partly why I like to change it up and make, make earrings sometimes, make wall hangings, make de de decorative vases because my um, two nemesises are handles on uh, pieces because that's, you have two pieces, you're attaching clay to it. That's your weakest um, point on a pot. If it's just a bowl, it's all strong together. It's already there. It's, it's wonderful. So as you start adding, embellishing things, um, your joints have to be good. You can push it out of whack as you're 
adding it, you can bump it. Clay um, is a little bit tricky where it's, um, th this is probably the, the, the most forgiving stage right here. Yellow hair. Okay, let's start shaping this. One of the things I'm known for, um, I think I forgot to tell you, my mom is a potter as well. And so she'll come um, once or twice a year and it's wonderful to have the two wheels and we sit here and we pot together and we talk and um, it's great to get the camaraderie because as I was telling Mary, working in a studio by myself, um, it's hard to be inspired. It's, you know, uh, it's, it's fun to, to collaborate, to bounce ideas off each other. So mom and I have a great time. And one of the things mom has told me, cause she's been potting for ages is that a good bowl, you want a nice transition. I know I, when I threw it, I threw it straight so there was a bit of a transition in there but I just let's see if I can tilt it I see that this is it's just a happy um smooth there's no sharp edge or transition it's just wonderful and actually I think I should probably stop okay one of the things I love to do is to do my swirl just a little bit in the bottom. You, ha you have to um, make it so it's not rough, so glaze doesn't glaze. If there's a sharp, thin edge, the gla natural, the glaze will run off it. So you, I don't want it sharp. Okay, let's double check. Okay, I'm going to go out a little bit more here. Okay. Uh, sh piece of chamois. Uh, piece of chamois is your friend. Oh, I don't know if I finished my sentence. One of the things I'm known for is I leave a, um, a nice rim. I think it helps. I, I leave a little bit of weight here. If it's too thin there, it'll chip more easily. It'll distort more easily. I think it adds to the weight of the piece. Okay, let's measure and see. Oh, it's only three. Hmm, okay. I could push it in if I wanted because it's only three, but let's see what it is here. Okay, and it's eight. I could. I could push it in. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, so I'm using a little rib. It's smooth. It's a, a little bit rounded on this side. This side is sharp. This side is rounded. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more height out of this. Let's go. Okay, I want to make sure I still have my nice transition. Let's see if I got anything. I'm not sure. I got a little bit. I got a quarter of an inch. I'll take it. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so that that was the throwing part. Okay. Turn. Oh well. Don't turn off your wheel yet. Um, this is always one of the most challenging parts is cutting your piece off. Um, since I attached it so well and I threw it, I now have to very carefully re remove it. And the bigger your bowls get, the harder it is to do this. <laughs> um, I keep fingers on the 
on the little bat insert piece, turn slowly and pull it towards you. Okay. Now you use your handy dandy screwdriver to remove this piece. Now I have to let this get um, leather hard. So um, once it's leather hard, then I can trim it. I, I threw this piece earlier. Um, it's not quite leather hard. Let's see. We may have to trim it a little bit later. Let me put it in the sunshine so that it um, can be ready. Let me flip this one. So hopefully I can trim. We're going to have to skip this stage. Okay, this was thrown and cut off the bat. Now you have to very gently move it. Um, there was a thing that I saw, hold on, let's do this. Um, that if I wanna move this off, it's just, it's not in it. I don't need it in the thing. If I want to move it off without distorting it, a fun thing to do is to is to put a piece of paper on it so you trap the air in there. Okay. So that when I go to remove it, the air is trapped so it doesn't distort the edge. But see, I had cut this off before. So now, very gently. Okay. So I threw this this morning wanting to trim it for you, but they're still a little bit too wet. So I'm going to pop these outside. Then we'll go... Um, We'll do, um, we'll go to the next phase uh, of clay. Oh, outside. That is one of the benefits of having my studio. Oh, except it's dreadful weather outside. Forget it. Looks like it's gonna rain. Okay, the heater. Um. Having my studio outside, I often put um, my pieces in the driveway and let them dry or in a, a mottled shade and sun and let them slowly dry because if it's freezing outside, it's freezing in here and they don't dry as well. Okay, let's go and glaze. Now, glazing. Okay. Oh, good. Is um can be quite challenging. Um, let me rinse one more time. Now, as I said, I'm trying to get creative. Um, this is uh, one of my lovely blue, I love the blue, standard, solid, it's super. Uh, this mug I tried, it was just light and simple and it's just perfectly thrown, but my glaze is medium. So I have to work on it. Sometimes with these glazes in the bottles, you have to paint them on. You didn't, there was never painting glaze with cone 10. You dunked everything. I'll show you dunking. I have some glazes that I can dunk, but most of all, if it's in that little bottle, it has to be painted on. It has to be three coats for the first layer and then each additional, and you have to let it dry in between. So to glaze a mug like this can take too long for my production, resale, time, energy. Um, 
so you have to think about that in it. Now, before you can glaze your your pot that has been thrown, it's dried, you've flipped it over, you've trimmed it. I'm trimming, um, I'm not trimming feet anymore. I tend to trim, there we go. This one has a foot. So um, when it's thrown, you know, it's, it's about here. So you have to trim all of this away and trim this away and put your name and your design. I do that now. This is a yarn bowl. Um, my yarn bowls are fun. Uh, so this is a time saver. So it's flat and it sits beautifully, but this was just fired in that, in the bisque firing. So it's fresh out of the bisque kiln. I, um, before you can glaze it, you have to wipe each and every piece because there's a, a like a dust residue from the firing. So you wipe. And now you think, oh, great. Now she's ready to glaze. Nope. She's not ready to glaze yet. Okay. We've wiped it. Um, now you have to wax because if I were to dunk or paint, this part of the mug is going to sit on the shelf and there can be no glaze on here. So specifically, if I'm dunking, um, I have to wax. So this is this wax resist. So you paint this on your pots. So now we've we've gone through all the stages. Now we've fired it, we've washed it, you've let it dry. You add your wax and wherever wax goes, glaze won't go. So if by accident I drip some on the side, not good. No glaze will go there. So you have to be really, really careful. I um, leave my bottoms completely unglazed. Um, I know some people who would glaze this center part. You could do that, um, but this is easy. This is easy. Okay, so. We've waxed it and now we have to wait for the wax to dry. Now let's think about how we want to glaze it. And I'm going to show you some of these pieces here. This one, um, I was playing, I was trying to get something interesting and it was all on those. It wasn't under glazes. And I really like the way, um, it came out, it was fun. You have to be careful because these can run because it's on a vertical surface and glaze is liquid. And if it's too thick, they will distort. But I was very happy with the way this one came out. Um, this is something fun and new that I tried. I tend to be uh, known for my splashes. That one's a little too splash. This one might be too splashy. Um, uh, but I tried this one, which was fun, and it was just uh, the white glaze. There's trimmed with a paintbrush, and I, and then I wiped it. So I really kind of think that's pretty simple and elegant. I think this could be fun on the, the ramen bowls. So we'll do that. Oh, this was here. Okay. This one was here. Half, half. This is my husband's favorite, but uh, it's wonderful. It's a great standard. It's white. And then, so I've dipped it in the white and then you let that dry and then you carefully and you dip it in the um, blue. White and blue is fun, but sometimes I like to be creative. So, uh, I guess I am being creative. Um, so this I tried with some other fun colors. You have to take really good notes because otherwise you go, what color was this? Um, so I have some fun samples 
and little test 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 glazes to see how they you can put glass in the bottom and um this is glass over a glaze and so it's glazed um you can put i could put black dots or white dots and leave it um plain i can do under glazes now these um are fun and interesting this was put on when it was leather hard so um handle trimming time and then i carved into it and so i did multiple layers of different um uh under glazes and then i did a uh, clear on the inside and the outside so you can still see so that was it with it over but it's i have to work on uh i like it i like it it's fun it's unusual it's different so um we like to do fun different things these are all my test tiles. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll sit here and I'll glaze, but okay, let we're gonna do, oh, this is glaze. Um, this is my royal blue. So there's a couple of glazes that I have that are dunkable. I have the white, I have the royal blue, I have um, Robin's egg, and I have another um, light blue and that, so, that helps me simplify the process. Mary, you're going to love this. The best stirrer in town. Go to the dollar store and get a new uh, toilet brush, and it helps you stir. Okay, this is my, my royal blue glaze. Doesn't look royal blue. No, it doesn't look royal blue. But it is. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I want to try and we'll take some notes. I have a an effect that I've done on a black, a matte black where I've matte black the whole piece and then I've added some um, colors to the rim and gotten the movement. It will drip down during the firing and that's another thing with this mid fire clay process is since you're not firing it as high, I think they go to 24 in 2400 degrees. Sorry, Riley, I didn't look it up. Um, and you have run the risk of your your glaze running right off the pot onto the kiln shelf, and then your piece is stuck on the glass glass it's it's physically glued so you probably you know have to throw your sh the, sh the shelf away and your piece so i will um a secret which is really fun is if you want glaze on the piece consistently but not too much at the bottom you just do a little wet so that means it won't absorb the glaze down there as often now Dipping is, you could see now, my favorite way to glaze. You dunk. I'm going to leave the handle part out. Shake, shake, shake. Okay, and I'm going to, here's our bottom, and look, it's I need to just do a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now I'll clean it up again before it goes in the for its final firing. Now we'll let it, we'll let this dry and then we'll put um, some other, We'll put some other layers on it. And then I was going to send this to Jennifer's for your next um, meeting, and she can show you the finished product. Um, there was something I was just going to 
you. Oh, that's what I was going to show you. Okay, so you say, well, that was looked easy. Well, okay, wait. Now, how do I glaze this? It won't fit. So you have to have various size containers. Like if I have a really long or tall piece that I need to dip, you need a long, tall vessel that you decant your glaze into, and then you you dip it, let it dry, and dip the other half, and then you put the glaze back in your container. So um, it can be challenging. Let's see. I want this to dry. So I'm going to glaze this part because it was wonderful. I got to use that as perfectly as a handle. Now I'm going to glaze right in there. Okay. Okay. So that's glaze. So now once I add all my fun things, it needs to dry completely. And then it goes for its final firing. Once it's done firing, you, um, you take it out, you add fun things if you want to add. You have to, um, since it's stoneware, if you had one little burr here, it'll scratch a table like no tomorrow. So you have to sand down and polish all the bottoms of your pieces. You can get um, a pad that goes on your wheel or um, you could use sandpaper or something. You wet it and you clean it up so that it's like butter. And then you need to price and or um, photograph. That's a whole nother lesson because lighting and what have you. But um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful medium, and you can do you could do anything with it. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I wanted to show you this while I have you over here. This is the speckle, um, the speckle clay. So this was a join. It's probably but maybe taller. Um, it's quite challenging throwing large amounts of clay because you've got it spinning and it's it, it can be challenging. So um, I had some fun playing with attaching. And so you'd measure the base, uh, the, the top of this and the base of this and throw it and then join it. But um, this is a, a fun piece. Yeah. I have a question. Oh, yay! Uh, this uh, waist is like pretty narrow, and I saw you put your hand inside of your uh, when you throw in the piece. So how you throw these narrow things? Excellent. Okay. Well, we could throw. I could throw a tall, skinny piece. It's um, it is it is challenging. Hold on. We'll take that. This one, um, I had a join, so I threw a bowl to here. And then um, I let that dry and then I measured and then I threw another piece. Instead of having a solid bottom, I opened it all the way down to the bat. And we can do, I probably won't be able to join it because it'll be too damp. But um, it's, it, you physically have to, I've had my arm all the way in and pulling up. You have to be, be very careful. So it's it's a little bit easier if you do it in two pieces because I don't I don't I'm it's not as precarious. But you could do it. You, you know, it's I know some people who throw standing up, so they're they're at a wheel and they're physically standing up doing all of the throwing. I am comfortable um, sitting, but you could do it either way. But let's do um, a small, uh, like a vase. How about we throw a vase now? Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah. How do you join it? Oh, joining is fun. Okay. Um, let's go over here. Uh, you join. Now, I was saying I, I have a slip bucket 
when I throw, I tend to put any of my damp finger scraps into this. So, yeah. so uh, what you do is you throw the two pieces and um, this is a, uh, where's my measurement tool? This is an awesome tool. Okay, this one, if I take my piece and I measure, I measure the, the opening. Okay, if I measure this opening here, okay, I'm right on. Can you see that? Let's go this. Can you see that? Okay, this it matches too. So it can be, if I wanted a lid, this goes inside just a teeny bit more. If I wanted to make a lidded piece, I tend to, that sometimes uses too much brain power. I prefer to just throw, but lidded pieces are fun. Um, okay, so if, I, so if I were gonna make an attachment to this, so now I have my measurement. I wish I hadn't cut it off. Um, you wouldn't want your edge to be rounded. You would need to take a needle tool and make it be a perfectly flat um, edge. Then I'd throw my other piece. Let's pretend that these might be pretty close. Uh, this it, Pretend this is my other piece again flat edge, and then you score. You, what you would have to do, let's see if these go together. Wow. <laughs> let's try it. Okay. Even though I cut this one off too, I don't know if I can get it centered enough. Let's see. But it's fun because these are things if I was potting here by myself, I never would do this. So thank you for all of these fun. Let me use this. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can get this. My mom. Ooh, not bad. Okay, I'm going to push it down. So we're going to pretend that this is right here. That this was... Just thrown like this. Now we're going to make, we're going to cut the rim. Oops. So that I have a flat surface for joining. And we're going to score. Score it. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just making it, um, I'm gonna do the same on the other side to make them malleable and ready to attach. We're also going to do okay now i'm going to use some of this soft clay you could use water um or you could use this uh slip is what it's called oh. 
Okay, so this is pretty ready. Let's score it again because this again will be the weakest link of the pot. Um, so we want to make sure that it's it's not the weakest link. Okay. Now we're gonna try to trim this one flat. This is a trimming tool. Um, and I'm just going to try to go around and flatten the edge so that we can make our join. I'm also going to try and cut a hole in it so that uh, I can stick my hand in. Okay, so now that I've done that, I need to score this. They make a fun tool. Where is it? It's much faster. Here, instead of having one needle tool, it has a whole bunch. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that instead of one line, I can make five at a time. Oh yeah, that's the tool we need. Much better. Okay. So we are going for it. Okay, so this needs slip. I can't do the wheel thing um, because it's not centered. Okay. Okay, okay, here goes nothing. We'll just make sure that I didn't just smooth out all my marks. Uh -oh. I have to get going. Okay, so woohoo. Okay. And since I just threw these this morning, um, they're still malleable. Let's... Oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, no, no, we're good. Remember it since I hadn't since I had already cut it off the bottom. Not to worry, remember, it's just clay and we're having fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, hold on, I'm gonna add some water to get make it a little bit stickier down here for us. Okay. Oh, not bad. Okay, that's fairly centered. Okay. Now, since I have my join, I smoothed it out a little bit there. I'm going to get my hand wet because. Ooh. Okay, let's get this wet. No, we can do this. We've got this. <laughs> This actually is a really fun shape. Okay, I'm going to open this a tiny bit so that I can get my arm in it. This is when you need this so that I don't, so I can get some of the water out. Okay, now I have to smooth my join. I don't know if you could see it. Let's look on the inside. Can you see? My join. Uh, yeah, you can just kind of see it. So it's it's rough because, you know, it was just scored and any extra clay will be there. So let's let's go in and smooth it out. Mm. 
Okay. Oh, I like that. Okay, I need to see if I can get rid of this line. That's bothering me. This was the piece. Oh, it works. I've had enough. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we're going to Okay. Now I'm going to use the not the rounded edge. I'm going to use the sharp edge and see if I can clean it a little bit more. I can also wonder if I can trim it. Let's try. This is a trimming tool that you generally use when they're leather hard. But hey, there's no, uh, I wish you can't see me on this side. Okay, I have one spot. Let's smooth it again. And I think what I might do is um, add some interesting pieces. You can add slip to it to give it a um, interesting, let's do that. Okay, let's do this. You can carve on it. You can do. Oh, my mom made this one pot. It was awesome. It just was spiky little points. It had a, it was just a, a, you could do anything. Okay, let's, gonna do some. Okay, who thinks I'm crazy right now? Wait, just wait. <laughs> let's see. I cleaned up my area for you now. Ooh, let's use is this okay i'm gonna i'm gonna I, you can't do it this way i have to do it on this side okay maybe i can do it here okay i'm gonna put my hand inside just to support it okay. now one of the fun thing that things that happens is that if I glaze it with a, a glaze that has a lot of movement, let's see, here's one. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Oh, this is a fun new glaze. This glaze has um, some lovely movement. Can you, there, can you see? Yeah. Uh, so if I do this all over this, it will catch in these grooves. I'm gonna put more grooves in it and the glaze will pool and run and do interesting things in this, um, on this vessel. But that was pretty fun. Okay, let's clean up our top. Okay, we have uh, a few more minutes. I throw one more piece with the black clay. Okay, so that's a join. And I'm really interested to see, I may put some more, um, I may put some more uh, slip on it and get some more texture on it. Whose idea was joining? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay.
Here you go. Okay, now before you begin with this other clay, you have to take uh, take off the white apron and switch to the denim apron. Okay. Now, again, let's look. This is the bowl that Jennifer wanted for your demo next uh, next month. Okay. So I'm thinking I had a piece. Oh, I haven't gotten any out yet because it's messy. Okay. I have a different water because you don't want white all over the black. I have a different bucket of tools. Um, where's my towel? Okay. I'm thinking um, just a a lovely rounded bowl and let's use about one of the things you have to see is make sure that sometimes bats when they are put on or old or something they can warp but no this picked a good one all separate tools so a separate wire this is my first demo of this black clay now if you look at it you'll say sloan that's not black clay that's brown clay let me show you this is this clay it starts out like that uh this orange uh, this is has had its first firing, so it's um, it's a lovely charcoaly color, uh, and then this is the final firing. It's this gorgeous black color. It's just wonderful, and I love it unglazed. So that's what we're gonna do with Jennifer. So she's gonna embellish on the top. And we're going to leave the clay naked. I'm going to do something that's called burnishing it. Um, it's you take, you can use the back of a spoon or a shiny rock or one of these little ribs. Here's this one. This rubber rib, um, it almost smooths and polishes and buffs the surface of the clay. So I'll do that after so that it gives it a, a bit of a sheen itself because this clay is not, um, not very groggy. Uh, it's, ju uh, it's just normal uh, clay. Some of it has sand in it. So like if I'm gonna throw a really big piece, it's um, easier, the, the clay body itself can, is, it's better to use a groggy clay for large um, pieces. But if you want like a, personally a delicate cup, I don't want a, a gritty sandy type um, clay. You want a smooth uh, stoneware. Stoneware doesn't mean it has grit, it's just, the clay. Okay. Now. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Got to close this puppy back up. Otherwise, it'll be like a rock. Sloan, what's the name yes. of the black clay? Uh, it's uh, I the think Cassius? it's called black. It was. It used to be called Cassius. Um, it. I think it's called Black Mountain now, and um. I just bought this, Jennifer requested it. The clay prices have gone up astronomically. Just for your reference, normally I can buy a 25 pound bag of clay anywhere from 13 to $25 roughly. Right. 
$48. Oh my gosh. And I bought quite a few boxes. So I got it for 44, but I, I, wow. I was shocked. I, but it, it's the most beautiful, beautiful clay. I just, I love everything about it. Okay, good. Now you guys get to see the other side because you saw the far side. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I'm doing a wheel wedge. I don't feel like this is going very fast. Okay, hold on. Oh, here's my my slip bucket. Look at my hands. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 hold it. I pulled it right off the bat. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, again, um, the base of this is going to be the roughly the base of my pot. So we want a nice, beautiful, I want it to be kind of fatter and rounder. So this is just fine. I'm just gonna center it one more time. I call this clay butter. Oh. Beautiful. Okay. So Sloan, why they are different in color? Do they come from different part of country or what? Do you know, I don't know that. Um, I know that you can get um, brown clays, yellow clays, white clays. And it's very interesting because as they get fired at different rates, they can, you know, like I showed you, they can have different colors. So um, I don't know. I'm guessing the reason this one is so expensive is that wherever, whatever part of the country they're getting the, the pigment or the dirt, I don't know. Um, it must be just be harder to get. Yeah. But it's, I love the fact that this is not black, but it will be. It will be. Looks like okay. coming from Arizona. <laughs> yeah, that's what you would think. Yeah, that and the red clay. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Okay, good. Okay, let's measure. See how deep the, it is. There's my needle fuel. This is a bigger piece. So um, the bigger the piece, the more it can have um, a bit more at the bottom. You know, you wouldn't want it to be too thin for a giant piece. So um, let's open her up. Okay. Okay, and let's pull it up. Okay, so I'm I make a little dent so that I can get my sponge and fingers under that. And then I just slowly compress. I'm more pushing on the outside right now. And my inside hand is simply a, um, a guide. Okay. What do you guys think of the the brown clay? Does it look like I'm just messing in mud patty? It's beautiful. Oh, 
Thank you. Agreed. It is. Okay. I think I'm going to try and pull it up one more time and then we'll shape it. Um, I usually have a mirror by my wheel so that I can look in the mirror at the shape of the pot. Um, but with two wheels, I haven't found a great place for my mirror. So I have to look sideways to see how my shape is. Um, Okay, let's go. Let's pull one more time. Now I want to feel. Okay. Let's. My edge. Okay, now I'm thinking we want it to be kind of rounded, a little bit generous. Here we go. Okay, sometimes um, pulling, it's much easier if you have your, if your hands are connected, it's hard to pull and push and control it while they're loose. So we're going to we're gonna give this a go, but I like to be connected. This clay though, the uh, shrinks incredibly. I forgot, I may make a bigger one because I made some ramen bowls out of it. A lady had wanted some, actually they were Awesome. I did a white glaze, like ha I did half. I glazed it half with the white. So just the bottom part was naked. The white glaze is different on it. And then I did a black splash inside, but they looked more like, you know, tiny salad bowls when they came out of the kiln for the final firing. They didn't shrink as much in the first firing. Oh, I'm liking this shape. Okay, let's see. Okay, I want a little bit fatter at the bottom. Did you see my finger drag there for a second? You could see the pot move. It all looks like a magic. I love that. Thank you. It's, <laughs> it's, it's one of the funnest things. And I want to tell you, and I bet Mary would agree. I truly believe that clay it is a learned art that you can, um, you know, uh, the, the wheel can be challenging. It's better if you know how, to, if you work with clay hand building first, just so you know the feel, the elasticity, you could tell when it will give, when it won't give, you know, but, um, but it's, I truly believe it's a learned art and that everybody can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a bigger one just because I know it shrinks so much. Oh, let's measure. Where's my, I had a measuring just for this. Hmm. Okay. Let's, Okay, so we're going to use the 14% shrinkage because we're sure that's what it is. So the opening right now, it will be, because this takes into a fact, um, five and a half inches wide. And where's my, but it currently is six and a half. So it's going to shrink a full inch this way. Same thing. Let's look at this. Okay. So this says it's about five and a quarter. That's what it'll end up being. 
It currently is six. Okay, so now I've my ed I'm happy with my edge. I don't have to worry as much about my edge on this one because I'm gonna cut. Um, I'm gonna cut into this an interesting shape, and then I'm gonna um, poke holes along so that Jennifer can weave on this. But we need to have a um, lovely swirl in the bottom. And cut it off, which is always the biggest challenge. Fingers on slow. Okay. So I'll have to dry it to leather hard, flip it and uh, trim it. And then I'll write her name and my name on it. And, um, Maybe we'll put it uh, in the olive hide sale. Are there any, where's my, I keep losing everything. Are there any other questions? Okay. Can you see the swirl inside? Um, I did cut it off, but it should be. There you yeah. go. There's the swirl. Oopsie. <laughs> that looks beautiful, Sloan. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Don't tell Jennifer. I got, I, I got on her drawing. <laughs> How much time do we have? Are we good? Yeah, we got. You can just do something else. We have like. 10, 15 minutes. Oh. Wonderful. Let's try and make one a little bit bigger. Let me get a, a bat. I'll try one of these new. Is this new? Okay. I don't think I have any more big bats for this. Now glazes are trickier on these uh, on this black clay and you know they don't show up as well and so if I'm putting white on it I I like to leave as much of the um clay body showing as as I can because if it's the black clay it's so beautiful I I again I burnish it um and then we get to we get to uh, see the, the clay's beauty. This, this does not feel like it's, you can't throw a, you can't center a piece if your board's not, if your bat's not on correctly, it will move and you'll never be able to center it. So it has, you have to start, there we go, let's see. There we go. You have to start with a, um, a, a flat centered even surface. You'll never be able to do it. And another thing, you know, when they all are patting the, um, that's not bigger. Okay, this is going to be fun. We're going bigger. Because it shrinks so much. This, oh, huh. okay, I've got my, that might be too big. Let's go see what this is. That might be too big. Let me see. It's, oh, eight and a half pounds. Okay. I'm game. <laughs> okay, so it has to be in a circle, a rough ball. Otherwise, I'll have to try to center. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. I forgot her wheel doesn't seem like it's going as fast as that one. Okay, we'll get it. 
Okay, I'm going to do the same shape because maybe there'll be a set. Okay. Okay, hold on, let me close this puppy up. Okay. All right. Do we have any ladies and gentlemen, or is it just ladies? Here we go. Gentlemen as well. Oh, excellent. Um, uh, men make grand potters because to throw uh, something this large is much easier for, yeah, this is slowing down a lot. But only, um, only Mary is the potter, right? You only have one potter in your group? Well, and my husband too, Gene, he's right here. Oh, he pots too. That's awesome. Honey, are, is my husband listening? <laughs> yeah, this one is... Okay, so I hook, I put my elbow on my hip and I lean forward and I'm actually grabbing the wheel with my legs, trying to center this. Let's come up. And come up. Hmm. Okay. Oh, got me. I come in from the from the studio and terrify my husband. <laughs> I've got clay everywhere, and I'm usually smiling from ear to ear. Okay, we're gonna go with that. It's not bad. Oh, I just threw it off. Okay. Okay. So again, uh, my base will be a little bit inside of that, but that's super. And we're going to do the same shape. Now, before I open this one all the way, I want to make sure of my depth. And it's funny, it's harder for me to tell on this clay. Okay, I can go a little bit more. That's a little bit too much. I tend to use dark towels. My earbud's going to fall out. Okay. Okay, we're going to go a little bit more, opening it a little bit deeper. Oop. Did you see that? What if it's going to work? My ear, my earbud. <laughs> Good thing I have two. Okay. I'm going to double check because you can't tell. Ooh. A little bit too thin. So that's easy. I just, since I haven't opened it all the way, and I have to compress it anyway, so I'm going to take some from the sides and push it along the... Okay. Here we go. And we're opening. <clears throat> I can feel it in my ab muscles. 
Okay, now we need to smooth the bottom. Okay. And let's slow it down and let's pull it up. Okay, these I need to corral this right here. I don't want it to be two separate pieces here. Okay. Again. Okay. Go. Okay. Again, up still, because I'm still just moving. Okay, it's gotten a little wide for me at the top, so. Uh -uh. Did I lose you? We're here. Okay, good. I, uh, so I'm, I'm coloring it in. Okay, good. So did you see how it was getting a little big at the top? So I brought it back in. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's shape it. <clears throat> We want it to be lovely and round. Okay. Oh, that's not bad. Like I said, this clay <clears throat> might be worth it. Just lovely to throw with. Oh, I'm liking this. See, I tend to have some weight. I'm thinking that since this is going to be woven, that I'm going to go a little bit thinner here so that there's no uh, transit, no transition issue, not like a bulky part. Okay. Yeah, now I have a little bit of clay down here, but I'm going to leave it so that the weight, plus I'm really happy with the shape of this right now. Okay, let's do a quick burnish for you so you could see. It's simply smoothing. Generally, you do it on a drier pot, but you can also do it now so that you remove any finger lines mm -hmm. i'm torn i i like finger lines because i think it's hand done uh oh did i just pull it on that's that good um so that you know that it's hand done but it has a look see that's for this purpose i'm thinking this is what we want Oh, and let's measure. Hold on. I used to have a champagne in there. 
Okay. Want no rough edges. I can clean up down here. Um, there's a tool you can use to take some of this clay off. I'm thinking I'm just going to relax. Dry, can't ever have a puddle of water on the inside. The water will seep in and crack your pot. Okay, let's see, let's measure. What was that? We said eight and a half, nine pounds? Eight and a half. Oh, thank you. Okay, okay, here's the 14. So the opening will be seven inches and at the end, and it's six and a quarter tall. Let's see. It looks, huh, it looks taller than that. Okay, this is, can't see the kite all over. Okay, so it's eight inch opening. So yeah, we have and seven and a half tall. I think that'll be perfect for Jennifer to weave on for your next uh, demo. Another beautiful pot, Sloan. Thank you. Thanks guys for joining me. Thanks for having me. Um, I love clay. Um, I hope I hope I answered some of your questions. Uh, I hope I taught you a little bit about it. And um, I'm in Alum Rock uh, area. Um, let's collaborate. Thank you very much. It it looked like it really looked like ancient magic. It's very cool. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We have Excellent. some comments um, in chat uh, if you have time, just read. I do, yes. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I will stop recording for now. Okay. Yeah.